Okay. I'm <coughs> Jit Singh. Uh, my father's name was Anand Singh, son of Ajay Singh, from uh, village Kadarwala, town Rampura, district Bathinda, Punjab. So my father came to Malaya during the Depression time, around the years 1937, and started work in the tin industries in, Malaysia, in Malaya. So he was working around the Trono area, in the, and there were a lot of Punjabis in the tin mines. Those days, main was this one. They came, they get to know some of the friends, and then all work in the tin mines, Chinese open cast mines. And then later part, then the war broke out. The Japanese came in, the mines all stopped. Even the, from plantations also was stopped. And there was no job for the people. To earn a living was very difficult. To get food also was difficult because no money with them. And then later part, the Japanese, they had intended to build the Siam Burma Railway. So they passed the word around that those who are willing to go to work on the railway, they will be paid better wages and given food ration at the same time. So many people were interested. So my father and his few friends, they got together and then they came over to Ipo, where there were, the Japanese had intended to group all the people, those who want to go to Siam. At the same Ipo Padang also, there was another big, very big group who was also there to be selected, or who were willing to join the Indian National Army under Subhash Chandra Bose. So all were gathered there, there were a few thousand of them, then they were separated. There's those who for INA were taken differently, those who want to work under the railways, there the Indians, mostly big population there, then a few Punjabis and then some Chinese, they were taken by the Japanese on the rails to the Ta Siam border there. On the border then they were made to walk to the jungles, but when they reached the camp, then they held, did a medical check for the workers. They did an in collision and then give them a few chaps against some of the diseases and told the workers that they have to go to another camp that is quite nearby. But in fact, it was very far, so they make the workers, they were, the workers were thought there would be some transport provided, but there was not, no transport, they were made to walk. So they, on the way, no food, no water was provided because the long distance, they were very thirsty, very hungry. Some were dying of thirst, some were fainting because of hunger. But my father, he took one container of water that was also not much. But then when he was walking, he saw people were begging, crying. So some he had no choice, but he couldn't give them much. He just gave them a few drops of to each of them. That's all he could only do. Some were very weak, this and that. They just left them behind. The others just walked. I think they walked for more than one day or two days. They reached the camp. And the camp name was Tamarkan Camp in Kanchaburi district. They were placed there and then they were given quarters for the workers, this and that, and then some, like my father, he was recruited as a guard for the working, uh, the workers' camp to safeguard. Then the workers, the area was not also very good. There was health, was very, health facilities also very poor. Those who were sick, this and that, difficult to get treatment. And later part, the food was also ration, mostly rice and this dal, this and that only. And some salt to get other meat, this and that was very difficult. Vegetables also once in a while they used to get. And then because the, 
the work conditions at the camp they were placed next was very harsh. They make the work in the late evenings. In the camp, a lot of mosquitoes, night difficult for the people to sleep. The water also a problem. They used to take water from the river, go and bathe in the river, drinking water also sometimes rain water, they get some water. And so because this no proper water, no proper food. They used to get a lot of chorella, then dysentery, this and that, other lot of diseases. And the working conditions also was very, very difficult, very at the mercy of the Japanese officers. And some were a bit understanding, some were cruel, but they had, had to complete the job with a certain target, so they just simply push the people to the maximum, make them work from morning, early morning until late evenings, without bothering for their food or for their health. Because without proper food, without proper hygiene, good hygiene, without proper health care, then the workers' condition was getting very bad. And later, by way to worse, then slowly. Uh, disease broke out where every night these workers who come back and work while they were sleeping all night, some even in the night, 50 per night or 70 or even up to 100 workers were used to die in the sleep. And then this caused the Japanese to be very, they become worried and scared. They, without if this rate of death continue, the workers die at this rate, then they would, won't have any manpower to do their, to complete their railway work. So then only they started to give some proper care for the workers, this and that. Some food ration, they increase a bit for them and try to get some vegetable for them. And the British prisoner of war were also in the same category. They also don't diminish them. But their death was less than later part when the Red Cross officials came for a visit. They'll come after one or two months. Uh, the visit came, then a bit of the health was a bit improved. The treatment they give, some, whatever they could, they give some treatment for the workers. Because they were worried the workers were complaining. Even the British prisoner of war, after that Red Cross visit only, they were a bit given a bit pro better treatment on humanitarian these grounds. Once the war ended, then they'll send the whole group from the Tamarakan camp where my father and his group was, namely his friend Mr. Naik Singh, Darshan Singh. Mm -hmm. Then they came back to Malaya again and start work. And came back to Kampa, then they start work on the mining. After a few months on the mining, then the emergency broke out, the communist emergency, then where they were staying in Kampa area, the British built big camps. They close up all the people, they make a camp with barbed wires, and then they recruit, they join as a home guard there. So after, when the emergency for two or three years, when the condition were being improved, and then they left that camps, then they going back, join the mining industry again. This is my father, Mr. Anand Singh, son of Wajir Singh. He was born in the year 1915 and he passed away in the year 2005.